Hi, this is Kelly from Pataka Kelly and Play Learn Talk, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to start incorporating invisible ink into your boom card creations. I'm going to show you three to four different ways that you can do this. I'm going to demo them first and then take you into the workstation where you can actually do it with me, all right? So I want you to set aside 10-15 minutes so that you can actually put this into practice as I go along, and I hope this will be very helpful for you. It should be a really fun tool to add to your um, boom card tools. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So option number one, put your invisible ink on something like a piece of paper. So basically we want to have a piece of paper that has white font on top of it and we're going to place it on something that is not the same color as the ink, as the white ink. So we're going to think a table, a corkboard, blackboard, desk, something like that. So in our example I'm using a corkboard and a typewriter. Most of our students have probably not seen this typewriter but I'm going to use it anyways. Um, here is our piece of paper. This is truly a, a transparent image. So right now it appears as a white piece of paper. When I move it over, you can see its true form. It is just a transparent box with a black border and white font inside. So this is actually a caption pick widget and I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. Okay, so let's go into the workstation here. This is what it looks like inside. I have my corkboard image I pulled out using the image widget. It is not draggable, it is just an image. I have my typewriter, I also did the same thing. It is also not draggable. The only thing that's draggable is my caption pick, which is right here, all right? So you see how it's actually a layered you know, piece. So let's go ahead and add a new page just so you guys can really clearly see what I'm doing. I'm gonna pull out caption pick and it went way across the screen here. I've never seen it do that. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I'm gonna delete that one. We're gonna pull out caption pick carefully. <laughs> And we're going to delete the things that are inside. All right, so here's our caption pick. It has a nice round border at the moment. We want to change that so it looks more like a paper. We're going to go over to border and radius and just delete so that it's zero, I'm assuming. So now we have those, um, you know, 90 degree corners. So we're going to stretch it out so it looks like a paper. And we want this item to be draggable. So we're going to do it right now so we don't forget. The other thing we need to do is pull out our text. And we're going to write our secret message right now. So we're going to say the, oops, the secret message is here. Okay. I'm going to highlight everything, center it. This is just what I like to do. Change the font, change the size. And this is an important thing to notice right here. We need to click on the tail of the text. Do command C, which is a keyboard shortcut, delete it. Then we're going to click inside of the caption pick and do another keyboard shortcut, command V. So this allows it to move together as one piece. I do not have to make my text draggable, just the um, caption pick. So now it moves around, okay? Um, the last thing we need to do is just make our font white. So we're gonna change it up here, change it to white, all right? So that is now going to work. I'll go ahead and prove it by pulling out a little corkboard picture here. And let's see, we'll stretch it out. And let's go preview. All right, so now when we move it over, it reveals it, really simple, okay? So let's move on to the next variation. Here we have option number two, layer, layer your invisible text so that it will be revealed when your student places something on top of it. So I have two different examples, and both of them you're placing something on top of it, but it's being perceived differently. So in this example, um, I have this actually linked when I pull the scroll out. If you would like to know how to do that, uh, leave a comment, I can do another video, but we're gonna pull it out and it takes us immediately to the next page. So our secret text is actually layered on top here. Um, this is not a movable image, but the text is movable. Now, the students have to figure out on their own that these seashells are the movable pieces, okay? So maybe I'm using this in an escape room, something like that. Um, so they're going to move it and place it on top of the scroll, and then what happens is the text pops up because it's on the topmost layer, all right? So we have the hidden messages here. So this actually can move around, all right? That's how you do that one. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this is what the framework of the page looks like. We have three draggable images here. We have a scroll that is not draggable, but we do have text that is draggable. So I'm just gonna show you the text here. So we're gonna go ahead and get a new page, pull out the text, we'll write our text, the hidden message is here. And what we're gonna to wanna to be able to do is rotate it, okay, so that it actually fits on the scroll, okay? So we'd rotate it using the size and rotate tool, and then we would highlight everything, oops, let's see, highlight everything, make it white, make it draggable, and because we have other draggable items on the page, we're gonna to wanna to make sure this is the topmost layer, so we're going to click on it, 
and go over to Z order and hit front so that it will appear at the front, okay? So let me know if that makes sense. All right, let's go look at the third variation. Or not the third variation, this is pretty much the same one. It's just a little different technique. So here we have a magic flashlight and you can kind of see that there's something in the dark. I have made this background black. This is the actual boom card page. And then I have something else up here that's invisible. Okay, so I'm gonna move this around and let go of it. So it appears now that the flashlight is underneath, okay, or being placed underneath, right? But it's the same technique. So we have an invisible text that is saying the boy is swimming. And then when I move the image, oh, I actually moved that around. <laughs> that's kind of what comes with the territory, right? So we have an image here that I've made this image too big, that's why it's moving around, okay? So you just wanna make sure it's smaller than whatever you're using to reveal it. All right, let's go see how we do that one. So the page itself, the background color is black. Let's change it to white so you can see what's going on here. I have a black and white image that is not actually black and white, it's just the black line image, okay? If you have the black and white image, the white is gonna pop out, obviously, right? So this is a draggable image. My text box is draggable, but I have made sure that the black background is going to have a black font and black line picture, all right? Then I have this draggable item as well. Now this needs to be the very, very bottom most layer, okay? Because it's kind of like lifting up the black text, all right? So this one is going to be Z order rear, or you could grab both of these at the same time and bring them to the front if you wanted to. All right, let's look at our last variation. All right, so our last variation is attaching your invisible ink to an item as a floating accessory. This is very similar to the first one. However, this is gonna be floating on the outside perimeter of your object. So let's go ahead and see the example. So we have three seashells. This page looks super random. Our students aren't going to know what to do with it. They're gonna to have to figure it out on their own. Maybe they take the items after they've figured out that they're draggable and they move them up here. Nothing happens, okay? You kind of saw that something just happened over the seashell. When your students bring it to the bottom, they're gonna see that there's a word attached, a word attached to the seashell, right? So it's attached as a floating accessory. So we have the secret message, right? It could be whatever you want it to be. So let's go and do that. All right, so this is also a caption pick. You can see that it's in a full container like this. Let's go ahead and go to a new page to do this. So we are going to pull out caption pick and delete the image inside. And we want to actually put an image in. Hopefully that seashell is kind of close. Um, let's see. Mm. Sorry guys, I, I create a lot of things. I <laughs> have all these clip art images here. Okay, so here is our seashell. So I'm gonna grab it by the tail, Command C, delete it. Click inside of the caption pick, Command B. Now we know it's inside. And then I'm gonna grab a text box out, okay? And we'll put the secret message. So put the, we wanna change it to a white color. All right, and click on the tail. And you're gonna click not on the seashell, but on the caption pick box and then you can move it anywhere you want. So let's go ahead and center it, change the font while we can. And I can put it anywhere I want. I could even put it over here. And when I move this entire thing, it's gonna move. So you can put it on the sides of it, the top. We're gonna put it on the bottom, okay? Put it right here. So now um, let's go ahead and this, remove this border here. I'm gonna do none. So now to save ourselves time, we can click on that entire thing and do Command C. Command V, and we have a whole nother one, okay? If that doesn't work, you just click on the image and hit duplicate. So now all we have to do is just change the um, text, okay? So we wanna have um, the, me uh, the secret message, all right? And for some reason, that one changed to black and changed the font. So what we're gonna do is we're going to click on both of the fonts, and we're going to go to font, and we're gonna change them at the same, same time, okay? and we'll center them both. All right, so the other thing that we need is that black, um, the two black bars. So I'm gonna grab a text box, delete the text from within, and I am going to stretch them across, or stretch it across, and change the background color to black. And I like that, so I'm gonna duplicate it and bring it down. And these do not need to be draggable. The only thing that needs to be draggable are your caption picks, okay? So let's go ahead and make those draggable. So we're gonna click on this part, the tail of the caption pick, 
and we're going to move them all down and we'll make them all draggable at once and let's preview it. There we go. They work. Um, but something's going on with this one. I guess I made it smaller than the first one. Okay, so we can always go back and change that later. So I hope you found this tutorial really helpful and that you get a lot of use out of it. I will see you guys in the next video.